So today we're going to meet Bob, who is a uh, living in this really pretty uh, four-wheel camper pop-up. Mm -hmm. Bob, say hi to everyone. Hello, everybody. And uh, you have just started. You're not a, a real long timer yet. I've been out four months. Four months. And are you full timing? Yes. And uh, so, what crazy story brought you to full time in your truck camper? Well, I retired in 2012, had a reasonably pleasant retirement with a nice routine, and I had some health, health uh, problems in 2015, and something like that makes you think. And I got to reflecting, uh, now that I was reasonably healthy again, why not uh, go out and see this giant North American uh, continent? It's fantastic out there, instead of sitting in little old New York City just waiting around. So right. I did some investigating, and just by chance came across your website. And cool. Thought of a van, thought of a road trek, and then narrowed it down. I finally saw a video of uh, somebody with a uh, pop-up truck camper, and I investigated uh, the various companies. There are about five in the U.S. that make them. And finally decided on four-wheel campers, which is located in Northern California. And this is their Hawk model of a pop-up truck camper. It's the second largest one. And uh, after that, I had to decide what kind of vehicle to put it on. So I did some more research and finally uh, decided on getting a, uh, a used camper and a new truck after reading one of your, seeing one of your videos actually with Will, another New Yorker who was uh -huh. the, the yoga instructor. Right. And he said he, if he had to do it over again, he would buy a uh, used camper and a new truck. And I thought, well, that's pretty good advice. Right. That is, I think that is very good advice. You can always replace the camper pretty easily, mm -hmm. but having problems with uh, with your truck is just a nightmare. Most people with these uh, pop-up truck campers settle for a half-ton pickup truck. Right. But I decided to go a little heavier to a three-quarter ton. This is a 2016 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. And uh, people with a half-ton pickups usually have to use put in an extra leaf and uh, airbags and various other things. And a lot of them are happy with them, but I just think this, this is a more secure foundation for a truck camper. So my, my advice almost always is buy more truck than you think you need. Right. Never buy less. I would agree. So how much is your uh, camper weigh? Uh, the bear camper itself weighs about a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. That's just great. It is. And it's it's due to the, uh, it's got a, a basic uh, plywood base with uh, uh, welded aluminum uh, structure and an aluminum roof. It's got insulation in the roof and the lower sides. Of course, it pops up, and it's got uh, heavy-duty vinyl on the sides, which I find is, is excellent. I have a long uh, camping uh, background, so uh, a tent-like structure is fine with me. So you said there were four different uh, pop-up manufacturers. Four and or five. Four or five. Yeah. And ultimately, uh, you decided on four-wheeler. Why did you decide on four-wheeler? Well, I did the Four-wheeler is the brand name, if that doesn't make sense. Sorry. Four-wheel camper, actually. Four-wheel camper. Yeah, yeah. They're in Northern California. Well, I did the research, and uh, there are two companies that really stress lightweight, four-wheel camper and one called all-terrain campers. And this, these are more readily available. And uh, you can there there's a heavy demand for them, so when they come on the market used, they're almost instantly snapped up. So I was very lucky living on the East Coast to get one right away because something like 80 or 90 percent of these rigs are sold uh, in the West. So it's not been a real long time. Uh, do you have any regrets on buying the pop-up camper? Not at all. I love it. I love absolutely it. love it, yes. Now some people complain there are some companies that make campers that are on the noisy side when it, when it gets windy. This one has a little bit of noise. As I say, I have a tinning cap background so it doesn't bother me at all. Now, I've been up to 40 or 50 mile power winds in Big Bend National Park. It didn't phase this rig. Another fine feature of pop-up truck campers is they're, they're low profile, they have low wind resistance, low center of gravity, so you can really, they really excel at off-road uh, capabilities. Right. They're just superb. Uh, you see a lot of truck campers, a little on, I think the conventional truck campers, a little on the awkward side, in my view. In a heavy crosswind, they can start swaying, and uh, I think there's an extra safety factor. Uh, and so this is pretty tall, so it must be four-wheel drive? Yes. So you have a four-wheel drive truck, you, and with a small camper, light camper, you can go anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And another advantage, I think, of pop-up truck campers is that a lot of people starting out, or part-timers, and people planning, they live in suburbs or subdivisions where they have homeowners associations which heavily restrict uh, recreational vehicles. Some will let, let you park on the street, some won't let you park in their driveway. So these, where they're low profile, they can often fit in a garage 
and the homeowners association won't bother you once it's inside the garage. Empty it's about a thousand pounds and I would say I double that with all the gear and the fuel and the propane and the food tools etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And you are full-time? Yes. And you have no home to go home to? And Well I've kept my apartment in New York City but uh, I just love it out here ah. and is I'm here in southern Arizona and I been traveling around this area and as it gets warmer I'll move north with the weather. Right. This a snowbird like most of us just go north, mm -hmm. go up in elevation. Uh, so no regrets. None whatsoever. Glad you got it. Glad and how are you doing on gas mileage on your uh, Chevy pickup? Well that is is an obstacle. Um, it is a gas hog but I think it's worth it for the safety reasons. Well, uh, would you mind if we took a look inside? And sure, I'll saw? De demonstrate how the magic works here. So what we're going to do is he's actually going to pop it up. And so that's one of the p complaints people have. It's such a pain to have to pop it up all the time. But it hasn't been an issue for you. Not at all, not at all. Uh, on occasion when I'm camped and I want to just go to short distance, it, it causes you to think twice about going, but uh, it just takes a few minutes to do it. Okay, so we're going to actually uh, pop the camper and uh, you'll be getting wind noise because I'm going to move you even more into the wind uh, and, and you're just going to have to put up with it, I'm sorry. So well, yeah, why don't you go sh show us how hard it is. Alright, so we're going to pop his camper and you're going to see what it's like. One, two, number three, Four, number five, and number six. Then I go to the back. There's one interior latch, which I undo, it's a little barrel bolt. Then I raise the rear panel. It has hinge folding panels that when raised lock the uh, camper in position. Very solid. So you merely lift it up. Back. And there's a little locking mechanism. Do the same with the front. That's it. Boy, that timing. Good thing I didn't time it. That was no more than five or ten seconds. Then we've got uh, windows on the side with clear plastic for wind and cold protection. Just undo those. And here we are. Super easy. I mean, that it really was. Uh, is There must be hydraulic arms that kind of help you lift. Um, they do have... Uh, struts that are gas assisted. I don't know the mechanism. I've got them, but the previous owners, previous owners never installed them, so I didn't either. Now there is a mechanism called a bandstand, which is used by musicians to raise uh, drum sets and other things, and people with uh, physical difficulties can use that bandstand to, to lift it up without uh, any strain at all. And also I should add that uh, there, people are concerned often about uh, lack of insulation but the company sells what's called an arctic pack which is insulating uh, material which you attach the velcro strips here which they which they say are, are, are quite good i have not actually used them you're, so you're not adding extra insulation as no, of now no i've been down to 32 degrees and it just doesn't bother me i've got this wonderful furnace that has uh, external exhaust propane based <coughs> thermostat controlled and uh, it controls all the uh, cold problems easily so with a uh, with this small amount of space, you're just if it gets cold, you're overwhelming it with heat with from the furnace. Oh sure, and I use the furnace maybe an hour a day. And uh, another option that, to consider is that uh, every rig has its pros and cons, and there are a few cons involved. I think uh, one of them is a lack of storage, permanent storage. Nothing above the uh, height of the camper. Right. Although I found that if you just go to Costco and get uh, some zip-up uh, plastic containers. You can just leave them in the cab, come back, and when you're popped out, just put them here. It's like a, 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 a pretty much permanent cabinet. You can just move it anywhere you want. Another problem with, with pop-ups is they do have condensation. When there's uh, high humidity and cold air, when it meets the warm air of the interior, it causes condensation. 
all I do is just wipe it down. It's no big deal for me. And sometimes when it's raining, of course, you don't have any alternative but to lower the top when it's when it's wet. But that will lead to mildew if you don't uh, dry it out during, during the next warm spill. Sure, and it's absolutely a delight for one person. Now, there are couples that travel in these, and there's a wonderful video blog called Mally Mish by a five-person family plus their cat who travel in one of these all across North America. That's hard to imagine. <laughs> so uh, love it. give us the uh, big long tour of, okay. your, of your rig. Well, in terms well, you've got of plenty of uh, features, headroom. Sure, it's got at least 6.4. They say 6.6. Six. I've got two vents, one standard vent, one fantastic fan. Got a three-way propane-powered refrigerator. And my main problem with that is keeping feed, food from freezing because yeah, there's no thermostat inside. Two burner stove. Let me show you that. That's pretty standard. It's got hot and cold running water. So somewhere in here there's a uh, hot water heater somewhere. Yes. yes. And there's a 20 gallon fresh water tank, a six gallon hot water tank with the hot water tanks right behind there. It's got a USB uh, charger. Here's the pump mechanism. Here's the monitor for checking the battery charge and the level of the fresh water. I mentioned the wonderful uh, thermostat controlled propane furnace externally vented. Well, there is a pretty limited amount of storage. Yes. Very, very limited, I would say. But the nice thing is I recommend that everyone get, everyone get the biggest cab they can in right. a pickup truck. And it's amazing what you can stuff in there. So, so I think the, that compensates for the lack of immediate storage here. So the king, boy, there is almost no storage in here. Uh, not a whole lot. I've got uh, underneath two the, large uh, containers there. I store my food right here. I've got the 20 gallon water tank here. I've got a single battery. You're not, you're not running solar? No. Is it very practical to do solar on one of these? Uh, oh, You've sure. You've got to lift the weight. A lot of people do it, yeah. A lot of the campers feature this uh, bracket right here, which allows you to have a pull-out shelf and you could put a bolster there to make a pretty much a queen size bed. Uh -huh. And the bench seat here, uh, this older model, it, it folds out to form another, actually a queen size bed. You're very comfortable in here, I would guess. Definitely, yes. It actually, because of the very minimal amount of cabins, uh, there's nothing above the height. Above it actually feels very open. It does. Another nice feature is uh, with the roof down, when I'm stealth camping, it has full uh, sitting headroom. Can access the refrigerator and you probably can sleep on the couch yes i do and a pretty good sized bed oh yeah very comfortable you pretty much have to be a minimalist to do this in here yeah but as i say with the cab you can really extend your storage so i've got an enormous amount of material here tools and equipment and backpacking and camping equipment etc etc the cab's the key this yes. is it a you have a super cab or a full two-door crew cab four door Crew cab, yeah, that's a lot of space up there. It is. Oh, that's a big bed. It is. This, uh, what's it, a full when two people can sleep on it? They could, yeah. Because you have such limited storage in the back, you really have to make use of the super cab. Right. Be warned, it's quite messy, but it, it's functional. I know where things are and it works. I that's can, all that counts. I keep an amazing amount of stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So it's just where you keep storage. You buy exactly. paper towel and you buy a multi-pack to save some money and there sure. you go. Exactly. Well, Bob, thank you so much for sharing your uh, your rig for this and uh, your life. And so you would 100% uh, recommend uh, pop-up campers for a minimalist. Definitely, I would strongly recommend it. Of course, there are a lot of uh, rigs out there and it's just a question of narrowing down the one you like. And another nice feature of these is that uh, the resale value is so high that if you eventually decide you'd like to have something else, you can recover a substantial amount of your money when you sell it. Right, right, very good. Okay, well, thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate it, uh, and uh, we'll visit with you later. Great, so long. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and uh, subscribe to our channel, and uh, like us on YouTube, and tell all your friends on social media there's a better, different, better way to live. Until next time, don't give up on your dreams. Don't settle for a mediocre life. Live your life. Talk to you later.